Welcome back to 3 Plus U. The first Tuesday of every month brings our favorite tech guys from Claris Networks. Today, we have a lot to talk about, so let's get right to it. Dan Thompson is back. Uh, and little did you know that while you're driving down from Knoxville, this news was going to be breaking right. about what's happened with the iCloud yes. to these celebrities. Yeah, so it's totally, totally tragic what's happened to them. Obviously, some very personal things are now uh, not personal anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, essentially, you know, the takeaway here, uh, Apple has not said exactly what has happened yet, but most analysts uh, and Apple has somewhat hinted at this is just people who had bad passwords uh, oh. or in some other way the authentication thing was just not strong. So um, the real takeaway here is we should always have strong passwords. Uh, you should always use IDs that are unique. If it comes down to questions of what city were you born in, you know, security questions sure. like that. Uh, I mean, even just make things up. Uh, I was born in Knoxville, but I never used that on any of those things because so many people know me and they know I was born in Knoxville. Right. <laughs> so uh, it just makes good sense to just make something else up. Someone told me recently, too, that it's a good idea to not use the same password for everything. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And this is kind of the pain. Like, there's, there's, a, there's a bit of a line here, right? Because if I use a unique password for every website that I go to, well, it's kind of hard to remember. <laughs> but then if I use the same password for all my websites, if somebody hacks one, well, now they have access to all of them. Right. So uh, the good thing is to, you know, have some nice long password. Uh, I usually suggest people use passphrases so it looks like a sentence. Mm -hmm. uh, and just make something up somewhat unique for each website. Okay, so before we get into the other topic to finish this one up if you use iCloud yes good idea maybe to go ahead and reset your password and follow your guidelines absolutely absolutely the times like these your account may not be vulnerable but when you see like things like this in the news it should make bells go off in your head oh I should probably change my password now and it's just a good reminder to hey now's the time it's probably been several months if not several years since you changed your password Go ahead and do it now uh, while you're thinking about it and while it's kind of in the public eye. Okay, you talk all the time about making the internet and the computer work for you. Yes. Boy, have we watched it work uh, for ALS with yes. the ice bucket challenge. Yes, yes. this has been tremendously fun to watch. I mean, here you've got Justin Timberlake getting ready to do it with a bunch of his cohorts. This has spread like nothing has spread viral in recent history. Uh, and it's just been fun to participate in. The big thing, though, is that uh, the ALS Association has raised now over a hundred million dollars which is orders of magnitude bigger uh, than what they did last year which is really cool because this is a good foundation a worthy cause and you're seeing lots of money being raised so the question that always comes up is especially if you're a marketer is how do I do something like this how do I get a viral campaign to motivate celebrities like Justin Timberlake who's worth buku's of dollars to get him to throw ice over his right. head right and then donate money hopefully so right. um, the thing of it is is there are lots of facilities on the internet to do fundraising um, being able to make a viral video or a viral campaign well that's a lot of luck but it doesn't mean that it could stop you from doing your own fundraising campaign so um, the general term for this on the internet is called crowdfunding and okay. basically the idea here is is that we're asking a crowd of people to help fund whatever it is we're working on so uh, Kickstarter which is um, it's not this website Website, but it's a similar website so Kickstarter is a web page that uh, really kind of started the whole crowdfunding craze right um, the oculus that we had on a couple of weeks ago was actually funded through that oh this site is pledge music this is designed specifically for musicians which so, our good friend Ryan Oyer I think is over there watching closely. yes yes <laughs> yes so uh, my brother actually is a musician he just used pledge music to do a campaign and raised the money for a new band that he started so okay. uh, raised you know a good chunk of money there uh, lots of other options. Fundly is a local one. You mentioned um, Booster. What's Booster that? Booster.com. So this is a way, like all these other ones that we've seen so far are just web pages that you go to. People can donate money. With Booster, they get t-shirts out of the deal. So uh, let's say you're going to do Race for the Cure this year and your team wants to have a custom shirt. Well, you can make a custom shirt and also raise money at the same time. Okay. Uh, so, and you can do this with anything, you know, Boy Scouts, if you got something going on, a or your churches. Group, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, it's a neat way. Yeah, here, here's an example. So, you can design your own shirt, sell it, and then raise money for whatever your organization is. Nice. All these things, the, the one thing that I would caution people when they get into these sites is the initial thought is, all I have to do is make this site and the money's just going to come rolling in. And while that may have been true at some point, it's not true anymore. So just like all the other fundraising initiatives that you would ever do, 
It's on your shoulders to broadcast it, to tell your friends, tell your loved ones, and then ask them to tell other people. That's the beauty of the internet. Okay, before I let you go, real quickly, there was one called Fundly. What's that Fundly, one? Same yep. idea? Fundly is just another one. So Fundly, what's unique about it is they don't really have restrictions on what you can raise money for. With Pledge Music, obviously you have to be a band. Mm -hmm. With Kickstarter, it has to be a, a, business, a widget of some yeah. sort. Uh, with Fundly, it can be anything. I've, I've seen people in our community uh, who said, hey, I'm behind on my bills, I need some help. And have done fundraising this way to do that, which is wow. which is interesting. There's a um, uh, there's a person in Chattanooga that's raising money to try to help um, a family in need who has a newborn mm -hmm. uh, that's has medical problems. They're trying to help with financials right. there. So okay. any kind of interesting uh, ideas or things that you might want to raise funds for, Fundly can help. It can be a way, and it's just kind of like a holding tank to keep it all together. That's right. That's right. And they act as a as a mediator. So all these sites, if you don't raise enough money, nobody gets anything. Um, so you just have to hit your goal, and then then you're funded. All right. Change your password if you use yes. the iCloud <laughs> or anything. Or anything, <laughs> and uh, find out from Dan again how you can get uh, your fundraiser started. Thank you so yep. much. You are welcome. Dan Thompson from Claris Networks. We're back with more right after this. <laughs>